Robert here and High Big Reds have a ton of depth, experience, leadership, and overall talent on the basketball court. We've all heard it before, right? We're all well aware, but sooner or later, enough is enough. Sooner or later, this team is going to have to go out and flat out prove it. With a 500 record so far in the 2014-15 season, it can definitely be argued that this team still isn't playing to full potential. The best thing is, it's only early in the season. They've got a lot of time to improve. Well, tonight, the Big Reds face a Mac Blue Utica Chieftain team that comes in 0-4, so tonight looks to be a good night for the Big Reds to get hot with the rock. Good evening, everybody. Derek Wark, the Big D, CPHS Channel 6. Well, here we go again. Another great basketball affair and a special affair tonight in many, many ways as coach, legendary coach Dave Taddy, joining the Big D up here in the booth. Dave, pleasure to have you up here, certainly. Thanks for having me, Big D. Off the tip, Big Reds control early. Lee quickly across the way to Zach Lee. No. A little bit of show and go off the bat, but no can do, not quite, as two Jack Kramer now with the rebound, and he takes it up court. Kramer guarded by Javon Thomason. Thomason having a great start to this season. Popping usually 15, 16, 14, something like that every night as the Big Reds come in at 2-2. Two and two. Trying to get it down low, 35 there, Will Young, one of the captains on the team. It's out on Will Young, and the Big Reds are going to have the basketball. 7.32 to go in the first, just underway. What do you think of the Big Reds start at 2-2, two two, Dave? What you expected maybe right flat? even at 500. Well, you know, Big D, the thing I've seen, I've been to every game this year, the big thing about the Big Reds, it's tempo. If they can go out and set the tempo early, play fast and tough, that's what's gonna win a lot of games for them. Just watching them play New Haven uh, two days ago, New Haven really took it to them, and I think the Big Reds responded really good when a team takes it to them, but watching Utica, you know, their JV and their freshman team, looks like they're a big zone team, and uh, hopefully that doesn't slow the Big Reds down. Bobby Wright a moment ago got fouled before the shot, took it in hard as you'd expect from Bobby. Zach Lee, speaking of him, this is Bobby Wright now with it. Mugged from behind, got fouled. They're saying two shots, so Bobby Wright will go to the line here. You know, that's what Bobby needs to do. We call him a garbage player. He can jump, gets those putback uh, points right around the rim, and that's what he did against New Haven and has to do today. First personal foul on number two, Jack Kramer of Utica. Second team foul already, so a good start in that area for the Big Reds, and good start for Bobby Wright. Puts up the first, gets it, and now for the second from the stripe. From Port Huron High School, missed the second, and quickly back the other way now comes the Utica Chieftains. 11 off the ball, Parker Chamil. Try to step in, looks like a foul against the Big Reds. Some things that have been hurting us this year have been, uh, you know, with the fouls. You know, you have Tremaine and Bobby get in foul trouble early and they go to the bench and that does hurt the Big Reds. On the throw in now, Parker Chamil, another captain listed on this Utica team. 0-4 Chieftains. You think on paper, great chance for the Big Reds. Get another victory here on the season. An important game too because it is the Mac Blue. And it's their second home game. Only the second one of the year. Kicks it offside. It's a good look at a three, but missed everything, including the rim. Speedy Drake up quickly. Bobby Wright off high glass layup. No. Bobby Wright, though, that's what he does. You just called it, Dave. Hustling hard for the ball. It ends up in Zach Lee hands. Pull up jumper, mid range. No. Really like how Bobby's starting the game, getting after the glass. He's jumping on the floor. This is what he needs to do today. Ebeling down low feed. Parker Chamil, the turnaround, got it off the glass. And a 2 1 game. You to go on top. Well, the Big Reds, as 500 as you can get as a pull-up jumper here, Thomason, off back of the rim, rebound Utica. They're one and one on the road and one and one at home. Great effort, Javon Thomason. Looks like early on, Utica's gonna be in a man-to-man, -man, so, you know, that helps us, and that's one of our strengths. 3-2 now, Big Reds on top. Loose ball foul, looks like, on Utica. And Utica, they want an early timeout. So with 5 and 46 to go in the first, Big Reds three, Utica two. Pretty good defense, it looks like, in the early going. And aggressive play from your Big Reds, Dave. Yeah, you know, the big thing about basketball, what we try to talk about is, you know, taking care of the basketball. Just like a quarterback, you don't have a chance of scoring a drive if you throw an interception or cause a fumble. So you always want points. You know, we, we talk to point guards that are like your quarterbacks or your uh, basketball team. You bring the ball down court, a bad shot is better than the turnover. But, you know, you want that good shot. 
eight and 13 a season ago, these big reds, coached, of course, by Kevin Lanshute. Nine returning players, lots of depth and talent. The one thing I did want to ask you, is it possible to have too much talent? You see the major teams, the major winning teams, and the NBA, the Heat, for instance. They've got LeBron James, you know, Wade, couple players, and then a surrounding cast of players. This big red team, to me, is five or six excellent talents. The good, that's a good question. The thing we try to tell kids about, you know, you need to know your role. Not everybody can be a superstar. Not everybody's the quarterback. It's easy in football because only one guy has the ball. But in basketball, everybody should have that role. And uh, funny thing we used to tell the kids was, you know what your role should be, kind of like when you're dating a girl in high school. If you're if you're not pretty enough to be dating her, it doesn't look right. Same thing in basketball. Well, do what you do right. I guess I was in trouble back in the day though. <laughs> so, you know, do what you do right. And, you know, not everybody's gonna be a 20 point scorer, but you know, there's people need to jump on the floor, get loose balls, play defense. Good sign, Bobby Wright going to the line a lot early. Means he's playing aggressive physical basketball. 4-2 now. Big Red's doubling up the score on Utica with 5.36 to go in the first. Again, basically just underway here. Big Red's a game they should win, a game you can tell they want to win. This is actually very strong play so far. They seem really into it tonight. I didn't think they were in the Northern game the last time I saw them play. You know, I think two nights ago, watching that New Haven game really woke these guys up, and hopefully they can play like that the rest of the year. Right, but you said New Haven, certainly a stacked basketball team, and Mac Blue, too. Yeah, their front line, they had a uh, kid 6'11", and looking at Bobby and Tremaine and how long and tall they are, they actually made them look pretty short two nights ago. Something not easily done at that. 4-2, Big Red still on top. 5-0-4 in the first. Thomas and now to Drake. And now back out to Zach Lee, top side. Thomason, way out. Thomason off front of the rim, now back. And right smack dab in the hands of Will Young. Yeah, but there's one thing that this team may be lacking this year is the outside shooter. You know, Javon Thompson, he's, he's a pretty good shooter. But other than that, there hasn't been really anybody yet that's, you know, put themselves out there as the shooter, the go-to guy. Well, I think their big strength and what they really do excel at the most is flat out attack in the glass. You've got big players, but they're dynamic athletes and they can run the floor. So you have to take advantage of that at this level. Totally agree. You know, what do you have? You have two starting wide receivers out there playing your five and four. Those guys want to run, get up and down the court, jump high and catch the ball. They tried an inside feed to somebody who wasn't really open, guarded nicely by Tremaine Lee there. Knocks it out of bounds, you could have keep. But again, the defense of the Big Reds showing in the early going. Dangerous inbound feed, fighting over the ball. Drake, nice little effort there to keep it for the Big Reds. And Thomason now, it's back in his hands. Thomason, crossway dribble now. Pull up range jumper, no, missed it, but in the hands, luckily, of Drake. Drake thought about taking it, but they double him. Now out Jermaine from way out. Tremaine, no, off the front of the rim. And Will Young. That was another player two nights ago that had a breakout game was B.J. Drake, who's just a bolt of energy, um, you know, along with him, him and Bobby Wright, you know, they, they wanted that game two nights ago, and you could see them really coming out of their shell early in the season. Parker Chamil, Joe Brown. Cross pass here, Brown's got it again. Now open, look at a three, and no. Can't get it to go, but he gets his own rebound. A Little bit of standing around that time. Caught the Big Reds off guard. They put up another three. No, that one missed off front of the rim. This is Gwilly with it. We don't have to tell you what a great football player Gwilly is either. They get it again for a third look, no. It's just they're getting some lucky bounces at this stage. A fourth look, no. And still they get the rebound as Gwilly ends up with it. This has to frustrate Coach Lanshu and any basketball coach, really, all these rebounds. And then, Dave, they kept putting up the trays. Coach isn't going to like that too much. You know, sometimes what happens with guys that can jump really good and athletic, you know, instead of going to that man first and getting that box out, they think they just want to jump over everybody and get rebounds. And still doesn't matter how high and how tall you are, you know, the fundamentals, fundamentals of rebounding are box out first, man then ball. Utica Chieftains came into the game, losses to Eisenhower, Romeo, Clintondale, and to Stony Creek again, 0-4, to match our 2-2. Two two. Score on this one is still 4-2 with 3-12 to go in the first. Again, Derek Wark, the big D, being big, a state of mind. Gentleman next to me, special guest announcer, Dave Taddy, he'll agree with me on that one. 
Well, from behind the back, Mason, who has checked in, he'll get fouled. And Utica coach here, not a very happy camper, screaming. Just looking up at the score, pretty low score in the first quarter, 4-2 with three minutes left in the first. But they're used to that with the Marysville game, too. They started out that way, didn't they? Well, you know, two nights ago, and I hate going, keep going back to the New Haven game, first quarter was 20-7. to seven. Big Red put 20 in the first quarter. But then in that game, outscored in the second, 22 to eight, so it was a bit of a different story, but that's a long mid-reach jumper that time. Ties the game 4-4, that's 11 on the shot there. Parker Chamil. Drake tries the answer. From the far left side, no, instead Bobby Wright, hard-nosed rebound. Avoiding the up and down is Lee, can't get that to go either. Lots of good aggressive play and offensive rebounding, Dave, which I think is the key again to this big red squad. You know, looking really quick, it looks like we do have a little height, event, height advantage tonight. And, uh, you know, that's somebody we'd like to see get going there. Sophomore Tyler Lee, you know, played uh, varsity football for us this year at tight end. And uh, it's basketball season now, I'd like to see him get going. Thomas enough to throw in. This is Lee with it now. Wants to post up. Let's see what he's got down low. Hard in, and nice move, got it to go. That's what Coach Lanchu wants to see right there. The big fella down on the block, 240 pounds, pretty tough to stop there. At this level, so very important to use your size down low too. Can certainly be a big advantage for a basketball team. 6-4 now, Big Reds, two point lead. Nice steal here, Thomason, and uh, boom! Question for you, Coach Taddy, what do you want on your toast? I want jam. <laughs> Those are always big plays in a basketball game. Gets the crowd going. Dunk sets the tone. Big Red's up four points. Well, Taddy, very dynamic player as Utica throws it away. There's a little bit of everything that the kid can do. Kind of an in-between kind of a player height-wise. So he still has the speed. He has a bit of length to him. Certainly good with the ball. Runs the court well. I mean, is there anything Javon cannot do? Couple history lessons. If you look up on the board, uh, Javon, Tom, his uh, father Cliff owns the career assist record here. So you know he learned from one of the best. Malik force up turnaround, away from the ball foul on the Big Reds. Bobby Wright walked away like he thought the call was on him. No argument at all either. There's a defensive back making a play right there. Yep, Malik. Show and gun on the football field. Nice safety and nice play there too as Javon takes it in again. But they're gonna call a charge on Javon Thomason. This is where it gets tricky right here, Big D. Uh, two fouls looks on him and now they gotta get their main ball handler out of the game. And you know, with one minute left to go in the first quarter, you don't want that guy sitting on the bench too long. Again, we've talked about it enough already. Big Reds opened up with a 41-36 defensive victory over Marysville. So they were 1-0 at that point. More on the rest of the Big Reds and how they've done past games this year as this one goes along. Pretty good individual effort there by Mason to keep this control. And we're to our final minute now of the first quarter with 8-4 Big Reds doubling up the score on Utica. Despite the fact the double dribble being called here on Zach Lee. Number 12, actually, Tyson Chapman has checked in, too, as well. Tyson. All kinds of depth and talent. Tyson Chapman, you're going to want to watch him a lot, especially if Utica zones. He's their three-point specialist coming off the bench. That's what he likes to do a lot, is shoot threes. Andy Pugue, now out 15. Ebeling. Ebeling, now Parker Chamil. Maybe they'll be holding for last shot, but you wouldn't know it the way Chapman's playing some D over there. Gets the hand in, out of bounds on the Big Reds and Utica basketball. 37.4 on the clock. Pretty strong defensive first quarter for the Big Reds. Some of the best efforts I've seen. Down low, open jumper instead. Kick it out off the back of the rim. Lee. So many players on this Big Red team called Lee, and every one of them can play too. This will be the last shot. They're gonna hold for it likely with 19, now 18 on the clock. So very strong first quarter for the Big Reds, aggressive defense. I'm sure Coach Landshut has to be happy with the way it's gone. Drake. You know, you'd like to see a better decision right there out of Drake. He's gonna be your primary ball handler when Javon Thompson goes out of the game. So, you know, you wanna make him 
have made good decisions throughout the game. Well, Bobby Wright a little bit frustrated there at the buzzer. They tried to get it off court to him, but they did it too late, and the buzzer rang just like that after one from Big Red Country, Port Huron High School. It's 8-4, Big Red's on top of the Utica Chieftains. Big D, Derek Wark, CPHS Channel 6. Joining me, Dave Taddy tonight. Dave, your thoughts on the first nice defensive effort from the Big Reds? You know, we talked earlier about tempo, and, uh, you know, starting this game, I think the tempo's in our favor right now. It doesn't look like Utica's going to sit back in a zone and uh, make us make long decisions. Long decisions turn into turnovers. And, you know, right now, we're just not finishing at the rim. You know, Bobby's had some good looks early on. Uh, down low to Tyler, he made a nice move. Um, don't know how many jump shots have been made so far this uh this game, uh, just looking back, I remember watching the Marysville game, and I think the first jump shot from either team was made in the third quarter. So if we got to play one of those games tonight, like I said, it looks, you know, to our favor. Um, but so far, the tempo, you know, I do think has been set. And in that Marysville game, I mean, there wasn't a lot of scoring, obviously. You said it quarter one. I think it was 8-1 at one point, And right at the end of the quarter, I think they got their third point. So that's all they had after one and that one too. And again, we see on the scoreboard here, 8-4. Could be another one of those types of games. Are you a favorite of these type of games or I do you think, like higher scoring? I think a coach is, uh, you know, watching that first Marysville game, I think Coach Lanchu was pretty happy of the effort that he saw with the rebounding. And, you know, same a little today, you know, they're, they're hurting us on our defensive glass. But, you know, if he sees that effort, I, see, I think that's what he wants. Well, you mentioned rebounding, certainly a big key, and I was shocked to know. 30-18, they got out-rebounded by the Huskies in that Northern game. It, that's something, that's not their strength. They've got to out-rebound you to win games, in my opinion. And I think that's where you see the difference in tempo and the way Northern played the game and sat back in the little zone, didn't push the tempo with us, didn't get our receivers, and I keep using football re references, but the receivers were, were grounded. They weren't running up and down the court, and sometimes it puts you in a lull, and that, I think that's what happened against Northern. Well, don't worry about it. Big D never makes football references either. <laughs> Malik, good defense by Utica. Now they get it out, Chapman. Pretty good look, nice feed to Bobby Wright on the outside. Complaining as he put it up. I think they can count it and go to the line two here. Wright, a nice job, getting a nice feed from Chapman, who unselfishly found that Wright was open. Just really good to see Bobby starting off hot early. Well, he thought he was going to the line for the shot. They're saying no. Foul before the shot, I think. But it is 10-4 up there on the scoreboard, so... Either way, Big Red's up six now. And Wright, major contributor to that fact, as you mentioned. Drake with it now off the throw in. 7-11 to go in the second. Six-point lead. Big Red's on top, 10-4. Big D, Coach Dave Taddy. For CPHS Channel 6. Port Huron Area School District Television Station. Chapman off the rim. Rebound Utica. Six-point lead. Big Reds. Utica backdoor feed too much at once there. Probably should have taken it himself there. 33, Andy Puke. Well, like I said earlier on, they're pushing it. Utica seems to push the tempo, and that's what we like right now. And uh, I think 10-4, being up 10-4 right now isn't the best, but uh, we'll take it. Not much in the way of field goals, if at all, for Utica so far. Good sign of Big Reds. Aggressive play. Still trying to get it down low, and I agree with that game plan. Mason, good effort again. He's a workhorse, that kid. He really is. Heart and soul of the team right there. You know, you, you have a football player out there. He's a leader, makes good decisions, plays hard defense. You know, the Big Reds like to put him on, you know, one of their toughest players, um, you know, whatever team they're playing. Uh, I thought he did really good against Welsh, against Northern. You know, Welsh had a great game against us, and then later on in the second half, coach switched Malik on him, and, uh, you know, I think Malik gave him a little hard time, and that's what I like to see out of Malik. Another thing about Malik, boy, can he choose numbers. He's number two, football, Woodson, that's a magic number. 23, obviously, Jordan in this sport, so I don't have to tell you who that man was. I was a Pistons fan, Big D, so I'm not a Jordan fan. We can oh, talk about me. Joe Dumars if you want to talk about. Well, speaking of the Pistons, how about that one? Seven in a row after losing Josh Smith, they say that we're going to wave him. Seven in a row. I think part of the reason is Josh Smith, and uh, like I said earlier, part of the reason is uh, Jody Meeks coming back, you know, able to sp spread the floor now. We have some three-point shooters. Tough free throw shooting there, Malik. 
Didn't get either one of them. But they're swarming the basketball. Para Lee's down there fighting with it. Tremaine and to Tyler. Throw in Chapman for the Big Reds with 6.28 to go in the second in a 10-4 game. Chapman getting some extended playing time here. Nice to see. Drake now Chapman caught him off dribble. They adjust nicely defensively. There's Tremaine Lee. And that right there, folks, in my opinion, is the biggest part of Lee's game. Attack the glass, hit him hard. There you go. That's what you want to see. You want to see those big guys hit the glass. You know, just a couple things I'm seeing up here. I think, you know, getting the ball to Tyler Lee a little bit more, us being a little bit more patient, because, you know, he's got the guy pinned on his back on the block there, the last two possessions. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Coach Lanchute's telling his point guards right now to uh, look for Tyler in the post. A lot of times these big reds too, it's like you said earlier, Dave, they get into a lot of foul trouble. And uh, certainly when you have a lot of players with this much ability, playing time, it's gonna be hard to come by at times, but foul, foul trouble, that certainly dictates it too. Yeah, that's what's tough coaching basketball. You, you, you have your starting lineup, but that's not always the lineup you go with. And, uh, you know, it might take you a quarter or a quarter and a half to figure out, you know, what your best matchups and what your best lineups are. Lee split the pair 11-4, a seven-point lead. It seems like an eternity ago that Utica had a basket. Trying to get their sixth point of the game, and finally they do as 14 drops it to Murray Miller, and it's 11-6. You know, we've seen a drop in the tempo, and, you know, part of that is still with Javon coming off the court. And like, I, you know, we talked about earlier, it's B.J. Drake, you know, he needs to just take a little bit more ownership right now. And when Javon's on that bench, you know, coming in and uh, being, the, being a leader for us. Chapman trying to catch him off dribble again. Now feeds Drake. Bit of a height mismatch there as A.J. Wilson defending Drake. They try to get it inside to Lee, instead stolen. This is Wilson. Good defense there on Drake a moment ago in the steal. And now topside with Parker Chamil. Again, a captain on this Utica squad. Low scoring Utica, as they've shown so far. Is that due to the big reds and their strong defense, or? Utica, maybe not the most consistent team offensively. Probably, good good probably, switch off, almost caught him double. Probably a little bit of everything on that big D. From way out, the three. But they fouled him from the three. Big no-no. That's going to be three shots. Tyler Lee, not sure about that call, but that's not really where he wants to defend anyway. Low post guy there. You know, part of Tyler's problem early on, just watching him in some games, is he doesn't, doesn't do a good job of acting the foul. You know, some guys can get away with a foul because, you know, it doesn't look like that big of a foul. But when you're 6'5", 240 pounds, and you lay your hand on somebody, Usually that person goes down pretty hard, and I think Tyler just needs to learn how to be a better fouler, if that's a correct term. Sure, why not? Miller, three shots from the line. You don't see this very often. Hit them both, and he's got the third one coming here in a moment. Tyler Lee, by the way, is first personal. If you're wondering, Utica is in the one and one penalty. One more foul, and the Big Reds will be in that same penalty. So lots of fouls up there. We could see a lot of free throws being shot here as the second quarter comes to an end. 11-9 now, costly. Foul there a moment ago. Utica made him pay, it's now 11-9. Bobby Wright puts it up, no, off back of the rim. Nice heads up rebound, Chapman the layup is good. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Big time play, aggressive player. 21 to throw in, Joe Brown gets it all nets back the other way, and maybe the offense is starting to open it up a little bit more. Big D's all about offenses. Chicks like the hoops. This one off a big red last. Utica gonna have the basketball. Trailing by a basket and the ball. So the face of this game has certainly changed since those three free throws a moment ago. Halfway point now with a second. 4.04 to go. They pull up three, this would have taken the lead, no. Thomason, good heads up rebound on the far left side, and now he's got it. I really think maybe Thomason's gotta take this game over again. Tempo setter, as you, as you said earlier, Big D, they came back a little bit on us, and that's what, you know, Javon was on the bench for the last two, three minutes, and uh, him just coming out here, giving us a little spark. Great down low feed, Lee with the easy layup, great find from Javon Thomason. 
Then we see a full court look from the big red defense, and we have a timeout on the court. Three and 42 left to go in the second. 15-11, a four-point lead for the Big Reds. Starting to open up the pace of the game, I think, a little bit more, and uh, more scoring, certainly, and costly foul a moment ago, but the Big Reds look like uh, they're clawing back, keeping I, this lead. You know, you had questioned something about playing time when you have a lot of talent, but, you know, something that could really help us, and if these guys could realize that is, you know, your time out there should be 100%. I mean, especially with the Big Reds press in full court for most of the game, you know, if you have that bench depth, then, you know, your time out there, you should be sweating, giving it 110% the whole time. Lots of road games dominate the Big Red schedule coming up. They're in Lakeview in five nights, Tuesday, January the 13th, as we look to future games here, as brought to you by CPHS Channel 6. On the 16th, they're at Anchor Bay. The 20th, they're back home hosting Mount Clemens. Off the inbound, steel jerk Tremaine Lee. Nicely done. Easy one. That's what the lanky players can do. Full court trap, and it's really looking like it's messing up the game plan of Utica right now. So nicely done by Coach Lanshute. I think that's the first foul on Bobby. He's been pretty good so far, staying out of foul trouble tonight. Well, it's the one and one situations now for the next 329. Two more fouls left in every time. Correct me, that's his second. It would be the two-shot penalty. So both teams nearing free throw heaven. And then January 22nd, a big one, as the Big Reds travel to Gross Point South. And there's no love loss between South and PH, certainly, that's for sure. They're at Fraser on the 27th. And then brace yourself to end the month, January 30th, here at PH. Rivalry game number two. Well, they put this one up. They got it. 17-13 now, a four-point lead. Big Reds have the lead and the ball. Looked in the early going like maybe this one in danger of being a blowout, but Utica has clawed back nicely. Mason too hard a pass. Thomason ends up with it. Almost traveled. Bobby Wright goes for the slam jam. Thanks, man. And the Big Red bench is crazy about it, too, over there. That's what we like to see about Bobby. That's what he does well. Stay around the rim. Finish. However, we had a foul first before the dunk. They're waving it off by the looks of things. Score remains 17-13 in Utica basketball. So right when you think, well, things are going smooth after that one. And certainly a nice dunk will pump up the crowd. Well, Utica's got the ball. Tremaine steps in. I like when they chose to do this full court trap defense. I really do. And Utica clearly does not. Just want to be smart about cutting the ball off. You know, the thing about you know, on that last foul was Tremaine, you know, the, the, the call was with his body. You know, a lot of times, you know, instead of wanting to reach for the ball, you know, what teams need to do in the full court press is just to run by the ball carrier and stop his forward momentum, not to pick up that foul. Every foul you see now shot by Utica is the two-shot foul. So for the next 3-10, Big Red's in a bit of trouble, no doubt. Foul, by the way, on Tremaine Lee, his first. And again, team 10th of the Big Reds. 17-14, three-point lead with 3.02 to go in the second. And first half, Thomason, great showboat move. That's Magic Johnson-esque on the fake pass, then the easy layup. He has skills, folks. And coming back the other way, it certainly didn't look like Utica had much. Out of bounds, off the hands there, a 21. Joe Brown, and Big Red's in business again now. Under three to go, 19-14. Let's see if we can capitalize on that turnover. Just like in football, again, making another foot, football reference. Turnovers are good, but what do you do after the turnover? And that was nice right there by Malik. All net. Beauty tray from the outside. And again, they were doubling Javon, left Malik wide open. That's a defensive error, I think, by Utica on that one. 22-14, big hoop, the lead is eight. Trying to answer the three. Two strong looks. But offensive rebound work from Utica. Ended up with the ball, then they call a travel, and Malik Mason fist pumps. He loves the effort, and why not? This is more effort, though, Dave, than I've seen in past games for the Big Reds. They really look like they care about this game. And this is how, in my opinion, they should play every game. 
it's good to be playing at home and it's good to be playing, you know, your second game after the Christmas break. Basketball season's a long season, 20 games. Well, I did challenge them a bit at the beginning of the broadcast, just saying I want to see them play the potential more. I like what I've seen out of them in this first half. And you know, the thing is, it's the trick is to keep these guys out of foul trouble so you do get your energy guys in the game and they stay in the game like a Bobby Wright and a Tremaine. They set a hard pick on Mason, opening the door for a wide open look at a three from Ebeling and 15. Drains it from way out, 22-17. Long NBA three answer, Tyson Chapman. What's going on? Like we said earlier, that's your three-point specialist. Comes off the bench and he knows what his job is, to make three-pointers. That one's not just from the line though, that's from way, way out, I think folks. that was from the G on the big. From Lapeer Street. But the answer back the other way, more conventional distance, Ebeling his second three in a row, and all of a sudden, we've got quite an offensive game here. 25-20, a five-point lead, Big Reds, with just over a minute to go now in the second. Well, Big Reds, costly turnover this time, 14 clapping Amari Miller, as Utica has the ball now, down five. Speaking about number 12, you know, basketball is a little different than football. You have football, you have the whole week to get ready for one game. In basketball, sometimes you got to make sure your scouting catches up with your game play. And hopefully Utica knows number 12 is our three-point shooter. Jamil to Ebeling. Will he get another open look? He's the hot hand right now. Big Reds adjust, though. They still get another decent look at a three here. Try to get his own rebound. That was four. Montreal, but Big Reds end up with it. Malik with the final 31 seconds of this half to Thomason, great no-look feed. I tell you, he really tries to give a little bit of show and go, not just some talent, but he makes her look good too. That, in my opinion, though, is what a point guard is. Finds open men, not only a scorer, but a guy who gets assists, and there's one right there. Nice look. And they all went to Thomason there. Big no-no when you have size getting interior passes, and Lee got one. Your point guard is the quarterback of your basketball team. Final nine seconds of the first half now. They're holding for last shot, but they do have to hurry. Nice defense there. Lee does get around him, though. Chamil puts it up. No rebound. His own rebound right at the buzzer. And that will do it for the first half from Big Red Country. 27-22, five-point lead Big Reds. Decent first half, Dave, and the first thing that comes to mind, in my opinion, is the aggressive play of PH. You know, we hope we can just see this all year. You know, we saw it against Marysville. I saw it against New Haven. Um, not so much against Northern in the, you know, in the tournament, but, you know, whatever it's going to take for these guys to get that spark and play up and down the court and attack the glass, that's what we want to see. Coach Dave Taddy, Derek Wark, Big D for CPHS Channel 6. Back with the second half in a skosh. Welcome back, Port Huron High School. Halftime, 27-22, Big Reds on top, a five-point lead, and a very uh, aggressively played first half, I would say, Derek Wark, Big D. Dave Taddy, head coach, one of the coaches anyway, of the, he'd like to be head coach maybe, of the football team, but here he is. Nice to have you aboard, Dave. Thanks, Big D. Just a little pun, of course, there. Off the throw in. Stolen Drake already. Here's a guy with serious wheels. Tried to force that layup up as he's getting fouled, but a good start again to the half. Points in that first half, by the way, for Port here on Tremaine Lee leads the way with seven. Thomason had six, Wright with uh, four. Chapman five, Mason three for Utica. A couple guys with seven. Chamil and Miller each had seven and Ebeling six. Nobody in the game really in foul trouble. Wright, Thomason and Lee for Port here on with two. And Kramer, he has two for Utica. Halftime stats brought to you by, of course, the folks at CPHS Channel 6. Well, you know, we'll see what changes each coaching staff made coming out of the halftime and, you know, see if what they think is going to help them out second half. Big Red's the throw in now. Thomason has it. Only six for Thomason in the first half. I say only, but it is a low scoring affair on the whole, especially that first quarter. Not a lot of points scored. Zach Lee can't get the kind roll to go through. 10, Willie, star football player. They just throw this one up to avoid going out of bound there. That was 35, Will Young. Trouble is he threw it right to the Big Reds. 
and back into the familiar hands of Thomason. Doesn't look like Utica's changed anything up. Looks like they're still playing man to man. Think maybe they would have maybe tried putting the Big Reds in the little zone. Big Reds looks like they're still coming out pressing full court. Start the second half. Strong feed there to right, but he traveled first. Attacked the glass there like he wanted to jam again. Instead, Utica has the ball. Trailing of the Big Reds by five, 27-22. Again, just underway here in the third. CPHS Channel 6, Big D and Coach Taddy. Off the glass, counted, yes, foul as well. Utica loving that start to their second half. Parker Chamil to try and make it a three-point trip. A little high post to wing feed, you know, playing there, you gotta be a little better. Playing secondary defense there, uh, sagging off your guy a little bit. Looks like BJ got beat, back door. Converts, three-point trip down the court. It's now 27-25. Five-point lead at the half is only one hoop now for the Big Reds. Thomason looking down low. They've tried to go down low a lot more in this game, the Big Reds have, and I like that. I do. I think that is their game. I think that's the best aspect of their game. Closer to the hoop, easier the shot. Well, 11 there got the ball hard from a big red. Parker Chamil off the head. He didn't like that one bit, but anyway, they throw it in here. Knocking some sense into them, maybe. Lee, crossway, put it up, no. Try to tap it over to Drake, can't do it though. Right in the hands instead of Parker Chamil. Now it's Kramer. Again, Kramer with two fouls. They do a switch off, and Wright's defense does the job on the switch off. Out of bounds, Utica, big red ball. Pretty good defense by Bobby right there. Good job not getting a foul, getting his third. Thomason now calms the offense of the Big Reds. Zach Lee and now back to Thomason. Looked like they were letting him have the three if he wanted it there. Thomason left Lee alone. They're saying charge. That's what you'd like to see out of Zach Lee a little bit more is finishing around the rim. Great basketball IQ, great basketball skills, but he needs to learn how to finish the play. Well, I gotta be honest, I don't agree with that call, but a charge nonetheless, they're saying. And Utica has the ball, and now they don't have the ball. Stepped out of bounds. Looks like the pressure's still giving Utica some trouble. And this is how I would defend, too, until you prove you can come out of the full court better. Because easily here, Coach Taddy, you can see, you got dynamic players, they're quick, they're fast, they're big, if you can combine every possible element, why not force them? Well, the other thing about pressuring the team in full court press is it makes, you know, when they do break that press, you get two things. Sometimes they make a bad decision and take a quick shot, or, you know, you get a turnover, so. Thomason tried to get the steal around the back. Can't do it, open jumper, no. Will Young still fighting for the rebound, and he ends up with the rebound, but they're saying he traveled right under us. And the Big Reds will have the ball. Still up just a hoop, 27-25. Both teams certainly have come out playing a solid defensive third quarter thus far. Going back to talking about pressure, you know, the fallback from pressure is when you do find a team that can handle it, you know, and when they do break it, you know, you usually get pretty easy shots off that pressure. Drake there, anything but an easy shot. He fell back as he shot it. Couldn't get it to go. Instead, Utica with it. Jumper, no. Drake, of all players, good ups to get that rebound there. I would think if you're a little guard like him, you love getting any rebound. Right with it, off the dribble, puts it up, no. Bounce, bounce to Lee, nice offensive rebound. Right again, this time from the mid-range, no, gets no rim. Battling for it and it goes out. And it's out on a big red last, Utica basketball. Need to finish around the rim. That seems to be a problem coming out here in the second half. You know, we finished the last three possessions. We're up, you know, instead of two, we're up eight. Big Reds with Wright, Lee out there, Thomason. Zach Lee, Drake as well. Lee almost got the steal here, Tremaine. Excellent D, and he does end up with the steal. Number five, Tremaine with it. Four and a half to go in the third, 27-25. And if you're wondering, the first four minutes of this third quarter, the Big Reds are scoreless. A lot of chances, but not any finishes. Just the three-point trip down for Utica is the only scoring in the first four minutes. Lee loses the ball out of bounds. They're saying Big Reds to keep, though. 
pretty good defense, Utica. And they check a couple players in now. 21, Joe Brown, 32, Chris Zach Lee. Both checking in off the throw in here. They get it to right, right bump a little bit. Yep, called for it. The other impressive thing I've seen so far during this first and early part of the second half is PH not relying on just the easy, quick shot. It looks like they are working the ball around, you know, looking for the good shot. So that's a positive tonight. Inbound ball looked like a bit of a chore. Catching up to that one is the speedy Drake. We talked about him before the game, one of the faster players in this game that I've ever seen at this level, I'll tell you that. I think we have his commitment to play a defensive back for us too next year, so we're hoping to see him on the gridiron. Well, you know the Big D's booth will be heating up if that's the case, I'll tell you. I'm all about speed. He looked pretty good returning kicks and punts also. Under four to go, 27-25. Big Red's holding on to Real close lead here, 27-25, the two-point lead. This one kicked ball right into Tremaine's hands again. Got a couple steals so far. They tried the alley-oop, and Bobby Wright thrown to the ground here. They offer help. He wouldn't accept it. He took Tremaine's help instead to get pulled up there. That's the thing, and I've said it before. I know we keep talking about football, Dave, but one thing about this game as it applies to the game of football you don't mind contact. You don't shy away from it because you're used to it. You know, I think it's, it's one of the things that separates teams, especially at the, in high school basketball. You know, you could play with a less skilled team and a tough team and get some wins because you have guys that like to bang and play defense. Off balance jump shot, missed. Parker Chamil has it instead. Joe Brown back to Chamil, now gets it over to Will Young, captain. Quick ball placement here. Parker Chamil puts it up. Yep. 28 27. Coach Lanshute wants timeout. And don't look now, folks. Almost five full minutes of the third quarter. No points for the Big Reds. Six unanswered for Utica. They lead by one, 28 27. Long time to go scoreless there. You know, we needed to finish, especially on that last break. You know, the alley oop wasn't a bad play, but we needed to finish that. Um, you know, how many layups and putbacks we've missed in this second half so far. No way should we be scoreless right now. Well, it's like you said, it's not like they're not getting any looks because they are, it's just not going in for them. But the Times Herald has released the first list of the year. Port Huron ranked fourth locally in the first top 10 list. Port Huron Northern came in fifth. Interestingly enough, the Yale Bulldogs of the Blue Water League ranked first in the area, coming off their big win a few nights ago. I guess they uh, blew out Northern. But tough to make a list like this because really you weigh one division against the other. But Yale looking very impressive in the early going. They've come out 6-0. I think Yale is just, it's, it's been over two years. They got a good, real good coach out there. Uh, even last year, I think they went the whole season with only one loss. So, you know, Yale... Yale plays good basketball. But you were saying, Dave, before the game that these lower schools, they're really strong basketball schools, and that's a big deal. It's a little different than what you see in the football where you see your powerhouses in the MAC red. Um, you know, Eisenhower, Dakota, uh, Chip Valley, you know, those are your powerhouse football teams. And, you know, playing the smaller schools, usually, you know, you see blowouts. But in basketball, it's a little different. You know, your top team in the MAC red is. Right now, it's Lance Cruz North. Um, in the past, it's been Chip Valley. But you see a lot of the lower uh, Mac Blue, Mac Gold schools being the better basketball schools. Someone like a Madison Heights Madison. Well, Thomason, crossover dribble from way out, hit it. They're calling it a two. So the Big Reds have the lead again. Then back came Utica, stolen by Malik Mason. But Utica has it again off the double dribble from Drake now. So final 219 to go in the third, 29-28. One point lead Big Reds. Finally, they've got some points to show in this quarter. All kinds of threes being put up today by Utica, and they've hit very few of them as Joe Brown tried again, but barely got any rim, if any, that time. Mason, however, front of the rim, can't get his own rebound. Still the one point lead, but Utica has the ball. Another area team that was pretty impressive that I've watched so far this year has been uh, St. Clair Saints. Uh, playing with two freshmen and a sophomore in the starting lineup, you know, they, they put it on as pretty good in the Christmas tournament final. And good young coach in that case in Sean Sherrill, ex-player of SC4 too. Pretty intense guy on the sideline. 
Speaking of intense, you could say the same about Tyshawn Chapman with the layup. Nice end-to-end -end look there from the Big Reds, and finally, they're putting up some hoops. Tightly guarded by Drake. That was 11 there, Parker Chamil. Well, they want to go into the post. I don't think you beat this Big Red team in the post. This is how you beat them. And Will Young did just that. Ties the game at 31. He's had that same shot, that same look for a while now. I'm not sure you want to give your big man that kind of a three look all day long, but if it works, it works, I guess. Lee, good down low move. Tries to get his own rebound as he's falling down, but it doesn't go. That's another basket you'd like to see us make. You know, those are two points that we lose. Well, they throw it away. And so nonchalant about it is Javon Thomason. It comes so easy for him. Almost lost the ball here as he's guarded closer. Thomason, but he finds a down low man. And Mason, he's hit. You can count it and the foul. That's finishing at the rim. That's what we haven't done this quarter. You know, you, that's two points there. And again, eight, maybe 10 points we leave off the board, not finishing around the rim. Hopefully fourth quarter we get those points. And again, defensive switch off because they go and they double Thomas. And every time they do that, it leaves a big red open. There you go. I told the missus at halftime, Dave, that you were up here. She was in complete disbelief. How about that? Well, one of my goals in life has always been after playing sports, coaching sports, and then just like most coaches, what do they do? They retire to the booth. So I guess I can check that off my uh, bucket list. 34-31 quickly comes Utica. Nice adjustment there. Tyler Lee to get back quickly and defend the net. Off balance shot. Can't get that to go. Tyler Lee hard fighting. Mason shocked at that call, but I think they're going to say Utica ball. You know, again, what we're seeing is attacking the ball. As a rebounder, the first thing you want to do is attack the man, get position on the man, then go to the ball. Always man, ball, rim. That's kind of how you teach rebounding. Certainly great position here from Kemenu Gwili. Gets fouled, he'll go to the line. Foul on the Big Reds that time, number 11, Javon Thomason. Don't look now, that's his third personal. So one more and certainly Thomason, it'll be getting scarier. And this is where the Big Reds have to find that second ball handler, which hopefully it's gonna be, become B.J. Drake, but the Big Reds have not yet found that second point guard to come into the game when Javon is out in foul trouble or taking a break. That the fourth team foul on the Big Reds and third on Utica. Way out, long three, final two, now one second. They've gotta put it up, but they can't do it. Surprised Utica couldn't get some kind of a jump ball there or arrow of possession, but still, buzzer goes. Three quarters complete here from Port Huron. We're after three, 34-31, Big Reds a little tougher now, but hey, they exit the third with a three-point lead, 34-31. Well, hopefully this fourth quarter, we can almost bore them to death, making easy baskets right underneath the hoop, the same ones that we missed in the third quarter. You know, nothing fancy, just Javon, you know, taking it to the rim, getting doubled, dishing it off to one of the leads, and finishing at the rim. That's, that's what happened in the third quarter, but we did not finish those baskets. Again, CPHS Channel 6, the Port Huron Area School District Television Station, Derek Wark, the Big D, Coach Dave Taddy. Or should we throw legendary Coach Dave Taddy? Not the yet. There's no rings on these fingers. <laughs> You'd have to say, take that legendary stuff to Marine City. Don't forget about some of the websites, too. BigDSports.info. There we are, by the way. Look your best. That's a big D right there, no matter how good we look. <laughs> Special guest tonight. Gotta love that one. EJ Shea behind the camera. But yeah, BigDSports.info, where I talk about all the games I broadcast. Why? Because I've got nothing better to do, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> BigDSports.info. And of course, we're on Vimeo.com where these games are rebroadcast there as well. Just go to Vimeo, type in CPHS Channel 6 Port Huron, and you can see the Big D online. Well, you can see Coach Taddy online now too. I still do I thought, owe you uh, some literature, don't I? Something I told you I was gonna give you, I haven't gave you yet. What's that, dare the I say? The all-time team. Oh, right, yeah, I challenged Coach Taddy to write me up a, an all-time Big Red football team. and. You're all right if you're slacking a little bit. I can understand. You're a busy man, so it's, that's all right. It's my penmanship that takes time. 
Shout out as well to EBW.TV. Why? Because they're still my friends. They're not rebroadcasting this game per se, but heck, give them a nice shout out anyway, Larry and Phil. Hope you had a Merry Christmas, boys. Anyway, throw in here, Javon Thomason, and 34-31, Big Red's three-point lead with seven and 46 to go in the fourth. Across the way to Drake. I think he wanted to put that up, but he had to jump to get the ball first. And now Mason. Crossover feed. Little drop-off pass, actually. Thomason wants to try and get inside, but they get it instead to Tyler Lee. Bumping. Nice follow-up rebound, though. Thomason can't get that, and then the tap. Little Drake down there with the offensive rebound and the foul. You know, Big D likes the little guys that work hard, and there's one of them right there. Someone I, who he reminds me of, and hopefully maybe during the football season he'll remind us all of, is uh, Montez Jackson. Oh, yeah. Spark plug of energy right there. B.J. Drake, Montez Jackson. Yeah, that little guy knew how to make tackles on special teams, I'll tell you that. One of the best I've ever seen. And it's not like, you know, when the Big D says best he's ever seen, it's not like I'm saying that with a four-year track record. We're talking 18 years here. And if I'm saying Montez is one of the best in 18, there you go, Dave. Well, you might see Montez walking around here. He does coach the freshman basketball team here at, here at Port Huron High. And how are they doing? Pretty good. Uh, today was their first loss. They were undefeated, and the freshmen had their first loss today. Went, didn't score a point in the fourth quarter. You don't win games not scoring in the fourth quarter. 35-31. Stolen, Thomason. Bounce feed, Drake right there. And they call it late, but they do call it. Got more than just ball, apparently. Again, it's aggressive play down low from this little guy. We just saw this a moment ago to the line, right on back to the line. Fifth team foul now, by the way, on Utica, and four still on the Big Reds. Call is on 21, Joe Brown, his first personal. Like I really like what BJ brings to the table. Really fast, explosive, great defender. You know, if he could pick up his you know decision making and ball handling a little bit, I think he could be really an asset for us going on through the year. And getting a lot of playing time tonight, more than he usually gets, perhaps, some guys out there tonight? Well, he is in the starting lineup, but, you know, sometimes he'll come out for Mason for defensive reasons, uh, size-wise a little bit, a little undersized, but... I tell you, Dave, you called it right when you said Mason for defensive purposes, Malik Mason the steal, but uh, it looks like the Big Red's a turnover, and Utica will have a trip down court with the ball. Timeout on the floor, 6.55 left to go in the fourth. 37-31, a six-point lead, Big Reds. CPHS Channel 6, the Big Red Basketball Network. Big D Derek War coach, Dave Taddy. Well, you know, you just hope we keep this up. It hasn't been pretty in the fourth quarter, but now we're all setting up six points, and slowly we're getting a little lead. You know, you like that lead to get up to maybe 10 or 12 with under maybe five minutes, four minutes left in the game, and, you know, usually you're pretty safe there. But, uh... As long as, you know, as long as we get that lead above 10, I, I, you know, I like our chances here in the fourth. If you are a head coach, though, basketball at this level, do you want a team with a ton of depth, or do you want, like I was saying earlier, uh, not to center out Port here in Northern, but certainly Jared Welsh, big scorer there. He is their everything. Easier to coach a team like that, maybe, or is would you rather have this much depth, a nice problem to have? I think it's tricky sometimes coaching basketball because, you know, you do have 12 players in a normal rotation as you only play eight or nine. So, you know, you need to find those three guys that like to come hard at practice, work, um, push your team, motivate from the bench. And, you know, a lot of times those three guys, they might not take their warm-ups the whole game. Or, you know, or you, you have a team of you're only playing five or six that might play, and uh, you're asking a lot from one player. So. But do you think there's a lot of pressure on Coach Landshut this year, ditching out even playing time? This is a steal, Javon Thomason. Yep. I think that's a good problem to have, and you know these are. This is going to be one of the best teams you know he's had in the last five years. Well, this team has a lot of showtime in it, and they like to dunk. Here's a guy who leads the showtime, but they're saying he stepped out. And he looked back and he's kind of shocked. There were a couple things maybe he looked back on there. Possibly stepped out of bounds, but maybe double dribbled as well. Both were very close. But a fine effort to get the steal first and foremost. Big Red still playing good defense. 
39-31, eight point lead. Big Red starting to pull away again. They started off the game, it looked like it was gonna be a blowout, but Utica started hitting threes. And just because I say that does not mean they haven't put a ton of threes up and missed. That one, it looks like it's out last on uh, Tyler Lee. And Utica the throw in, 11 here in a minute, Parker Chamil. Big thing that's happening right now, you don't see Bobby and Tremaine on the floor, but you know that they're getting a good rest here right now with Tyler playing pretty good in the post. So I'm sure they're gonna come in here in the next minute or two and you're gonna see them guys running up and down the court. Great presence of mind there by Thomason to keep tapping that ball into the air. He just does all the little things right and there's proof right there on that rebound. Lee again, Thomas on the follow up, Lee fouled first. Probably one of the best games I've seen Tyler play. He's had the most touches this game, but again, his big thing is just staying out of foul, foul trouble so he can stay in the game. Well, we said it about Drake too, right? Same thing that can be said about Lee, the playing time tonight. He's yeah. getting it. Yes. Second foul on Will Young of Utica. One more and they'll be in the one and one penalty here as their 16th foul. Big Reds have been in the four-team foul spot for a long time now, so nothing to worry about from their end, at least for now. 39-31. Lee missed the first, trying to put the Big Reds up nine here. Our first broadcast after the Christmas break. I don't even have to ask if Santa Claus was good to coach Taddy. I already know. He's spoiled rotten always. I get coal in my stockings, but yeah. <laughs> Golden coal, perhaps. Nice new burr. It's in the works right now. Yeah, Tailgaters West. Yeah, we know a pretty good uh, carpenter that does some pretty good work. I'm sure you do. Stolen again, Malik Mason. Crossway, layup, yes. Tyshawn Chapman. Here's that 10 point lead with five left in the game. That's what you want to see going in the fourth quarter. I think Chapman has been a real nice X factor here tonight as well. One name though that I haven't seen a lot on, Dave, and maybe you can clarify this one. Willie Jefferson has not been in this game tonight. Is he hurt or? I think there's um, some disciplinary reasons going on with Willie right now. Not too sure. Um, so I don't know when he's coming back and if he's coming back. But when he checks in, I have liked the effort I've seen out of Willie this year, that's for sure. Did like did like what Willie was bringing, especially against the uh, Northern. I thought he was one of the guys that really, uh, you know, put us over the top late in the game, playing really tough. You know, I just like how Willie competed that game. Um, watching the game from the stands, I was pretty pleased with his effort. 41-31, a 10-point lead now as we have a timeout on the floor with 5 and 15 to go in the fourth. Derek Work, Big D, Coach Dave Taddy, CPHS, Channel 6. A decent crowd on the big red side, as you'd expect. Not like the Northern game where it was well, pretty well filled both sides, but I guess you'd expect that with the rivalry game. But this doesn't seem like the same big red team. I called it earlier. Is it because they're playing Utica again, an 0-4 basketball team? It's perhaps that way, but it's a better effort, I think. And guys like Drake, you know, Thomason has been spectacular all over the court tonight. You said extended playing time, Tyler Lee. Certainly that's been a big factor, so nice to see, and it you know enhances the depth when these guys get more time, I think. You know, you just hope they get into a groove. It's hard to come out of the court and play a minute, then sit for two minutes, come back, play two minutes. You know, you'd like to get extended playing time, but the big thing about Tyler is staying out of foul trouble so he can play those extended minutes. CPHS staff tonight, I never did get a list. But the two that I do know, certainly the bloodhound, Chris Orell, he's been up, he's been down, he's been everywhere, underneath, above. You call it, he's been doing it. I mean, I know what power does on a television. That's the extent of my technical marvel. But the bloodhound sets it all up. So certainly good job, Chris Orell tonight. And the director tonight, the big fella on the camera, EJ Shea. Back to this one. 5.04 left to go, again, 10 point lead. Utica gotta start putting some hoops in if they wanna catch the Big Reds here. Couple three point tries again missed. Their outside shooting has not been great tonight. They switch off quickly on Thomas and seems to work. Looks like they're coming with the double after the half court, after the Big Reds come over half court. Little trap, um, like it's five minutes left in the game, up by 10, you're gonna have to do something. 
That one actually was out on Tyler Lee, but he got called for a foul anyway. 15 foul on the Big Reds. Again, the sixth team foul on Utica a moment ago. So, one more. It's a one and one shooting situation for the Big Reds. This is Gwilly. Bounce feed. What a future that kid has in football. We'll, we'll see him next year. Don't want to, but we'll have to see him one more time. Four and a half now to go. Gwilly off the dribble. Lee stepping in call here, and that's going to be his third personal. So Coach Lanshute might have something to worry about here if Big Tyler gets into, get into some trouble. Tremaine Lee, I think, is going to check in for him. Yeah, they don't waste any time here. They don't want to see Lee in foul trouble, so they bring in five instead. Little disappointed coming off the court, Tyler, but you know he wanted to stay out there, but again, foul trouble. I figure at this stage, too, they were going to bring up D'Angelo at some point, but I guess that's another topic for another moment. Thomason, end to end, wham. Well, we were talking about earlier finding that extra ball handler, decision maker, and talking about having your quarterback be your point guard. Uh, good to have your actual quarterback <laughs> making decisions for you on the basketball court, but you know that's going to be coach's decision. Well, this last little bit looked a bit like a practice, a Javon Thomason practice of just fun and circus kind of stuff. Got two steals, got a rebound, put it up off the glass, tried some showboat stuff, and then it went back to Utica. Now it's back to the Big Reds. A little bit of back and forth action without much hoops, but uh, that one is out on Utica. I believe Big Reds to keep. But funny to watch nonetheless. <laughs> he can do her all. He's got it now. Takes it in, and there it is. Wow. There's your 14 point lead, 3.30 left in the fourth. And the talented players, they're talented because they make it look so easy too. A lot of athletes here on the court. Even, you know, Javon Thompson not being a football player, but he would have looked pretty good playing quarterback for us uh, in the last couple of years. But a really good athlete, really good kid. Try to pick and roll Thomason. Now it's top side instead. Gets hacked in the act. And is this call on Thomason? A few it could be on. Maybe Drake. Maybe right again. Checking his lip there for blood was right. Out of all the big reds, I think he gets banged around and he bangs around, you know, down low quite a bit. Maybe more so than any other big red. And there's quite a few of them there that don't mind, you know, the physical play. Bobby's a lot tougher, you know, than you might just look at him and see the long, lanky, uh, skinnier type of body, but pretty tough. I don't remember him missing a football game or a practice in two years, so pretty durable kid. 45-32, a 13-point game with three left to go. Utica has to up their defense for any chance of coming back here. And you can see they're doubling now every chance they get. Down low, yes. Great feed to right first off, who saw Lee all alone down low. Bang, bang, bang. Easy baskets around the hoop. 15-point lead. Big Reds have their biggest lead. Good look at a three here, and yes, all net. Did they ever need that to stay alive in this game as the lead is now 12 again? Now this is where it can get a little difficult. It's almost like a prevent defense in football. Do you go to the prevent and, you know, stop the momentum that you've built up? Same thing here in basketball. Are you not going to attack and, you know, use the clock to your advantage? Well, fans of the Big D out there, <laughs> they know me well as somebody who argues two things in two sports. No shot clock in basketball, no play clock in football at this level. I don't understand either. I'll never understand either, as we have a timeout on the court here. 47-35, 12 point lead with 2.11 to go in the fourth. Big Reds on top. Teams in the past have taken advantage of that, especially if you're uh, you know, not as skillful or athletic as some teams. You sit back in the zone, you know, make teams take bad shots, and then you, on the other hand, <laughs> you know, work the ball around, maybe take two minutes during a possession and, you know, force teams into slow tempo games and, you know, almost like in a football game where, you know, you're taking every second there is in between those plays and slowing down that team um, that you're facing. To me, though, it takes away from the sport for what the sport is. And I just don't understand that. I mean, 
Is it a technological thing where you can't afford to put a clock on a wall? Or I don't understand it, but I really think it's needed. I do. People do take advantage of those rules, and I, I don't like going to one of those games. I mean, but you can't blame a coach if he's just trying to win and he's got to do, you know, within the rules, and, you know, they do take advantage of that no shot clock rule. Even if it's a ref call with a stopwatch, even one minute, at least that's something. Anyway, Thomas, perhaps another one of our arguments for another day, having a pop or two. Thomason hits the first. Had a nice game, six at halftime. I think that's a little bit under his halftime average, but he's been all over the place here in the second. Great follow-up, Bobby, right here on the second shot miss. Right in the hands of Tremaine Lee, and as he puts it up and in, he's fouled too. First time I thought about this, but if Port here and High had a volleyball team, I think we'd have a pretty good men's squad there. But pretty well they have everything else, don't they? Those guys would probably bring the thunder on some spikes. <laughs> They certainly have weightlifting, something I know you're proud of. Big powerlifting meet this Saturday, Lake Orion, first of the year. I know you're after the Big D to come announce that one, but I, I gotta be honest. Well, you could tell by my massive physique, right? I'm right into that. But. Anyway, 51-35 now. They've brought her wide open here. 16-point lead, Big Reds. Kyle Landry has checked in for the Big Reds, too. Good to see him in the game now. More playing time for more players. They take it in hard. Instead, they kick it out for a three. Yep. That's excellent ball movement, that trip down court. Andre Montreal with the hoop. And it's a 13-point game now as they pressure Thomason. Almost get the steal, but Mason, nice presence of mind, triple teamed. And did he step out of bounds first? Well, oh, they're calling a timeout here. Timeout, I think, Big Reds. Yes, he did get the timeout in. Excellent presence of mind by Malik. And he didn't really panic there in the triple team, which is nice to see. Tough thing on a coach here. You know, you're trying to get a lot of your players into the game. Very similar to, again, another football reference. You know, being up 35 at half and trying to talk to your guys, knowing you're putting in the subs. But what I always preach is a clean game. You know, yes, you have the subs in, you're up big, but let's play clean. I expect, you know, the subs to do just what our starters would do and, and finish the game clean. The Bloodhound is up here in the attic. He's given us the space, so thank you for that. I don't even know if he hears me, he's just nodding. The only break he's had all night long, and they pay him for it too, believe me. Anyway, on the throw in, Landry almost loses the ball, but he keeps. Important right now, Big Rez just maintain possession, but that's a great feat again. He's having a sick game as a pure point guard, an assist point guard, a points getting point guard. I mean, he's finding these guys down low with no looks and everything else. By the way, 15, Cody Badger is in for the Big Reds. This is a three-pointer from the outside. 53-41 now, a 12-point lead. Final minute of a very definitive performance. Another player, 25, has checked in, Brian Haynes. So quote unquote mop up duty, if you will, but they love it. They're having fun with this, you can tell. And you know the bench, anytime you can watch them score, the starters that are now on the bench, they love to see that too, so. 22, that's O'Connor who has checked in for Utica. This from way out again, front of the rim, rebound Thomason. Just another addition to his stats this evening. Great with the ball, pressured by A.J. Wilson, but Wilson does earn the steal here. Decent work by Utica, but they're down by just too much. They're down 12. Go for the three, it's a nice look at a three, and they get it. A nine-point lead now, it's in single digits, but they're not gonna foul anyway. They're just gonna let it go by the looks of things. So they're conceding it, just like that, Dave. Nice win tonight for the Port here in high. Big Reds. Our final score, 53-44. Big Reds win by nine over Utica Chieftains, who are going to fall now to 0-5. Our Big Reds, though, big time win to get above 500 now at 3-2. and Well, D, I, I appreciate you having me up in the booth for my first ever broadcast, and I uh, thank you very much.
Yeah, it was a good time. And one thing about you, Dave, that I do want to say uh, to anybody listening is there's a lot of people out there that tell you things that might be, you tell it like it is. And I have respect for you for that reason. So thanks a lot for being up here, buddy. All right, Big D, hope to do it again, man. All right. For Coach Steve Taddy and the rest of the CPHS Channel 6 staff tonight, I've been Derek Wark, the Big D. Nine-point win, Big Reds, 53-44. Until next time, work hard, sleep lots. Big D and Coach Taddy, out. <laughs>